Good afternoon and welcome. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I hope you are as well. <laughs> it's great. I'm having a conversation with you and myself <laughs> all at the same time. I'm, I'm like, my mouth is being possessed. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up and I'm not. Oh, well. Hey, everyone. Welcome. My name is Marilyn Shannon and this is Crazy Land. No, this is the Breaking Free show. And so every now and then I just break free of wherever I was a little bit more than I was yesterday or the last second. Hope you're all doing great. I'm glad to have you here as always. It's an honor. It's a blessing. Thank you for sharing your life with us, your heart with us. We have a fun show in store. Hold on to your seats because it's going to be fun, 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 fun. And I'm done. You're doing good? Yep. We got somebody. Hello. Hello. This is Diana Darden. I got a message from Rachel to call. <laughs> All right. Well, let me just introduce Rachel. Hold on. Rachel, hello. <laughs> it's already starting. <laughs> oh, well, it, it's noon. It's past noon. That's good. Well, let hold on just one second. Fr is it your name Fran, you said? Diana. No, no, Diana. Okay. Hold on one second, okay? Don't go anywhere. Okay. Rachel. Yes. Hey. Hi. It's so glad to be here. We already have a party. We already <laughs> All we have to do is just show up and there's a party. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> How are you, Rachel? I'm wonderful. How good. are you? I'm doing great. It's good to have you back. I'm so glad to be here. Good. Well, everybody, this is Rachel. She's been on our show several times. We love her. She comes in all of her glory and her color and her mm -hmm. just, I mean, there are no words. I can't even describe it, but maybe you have one for me. Great this, mood. Great mood. That's not even enough. Come on, Amnon, look at her. Look at her color. I mean, she's like phenomenal. Yeah, I told her before, look, she's got an aura. She she does have an aura, really. Wow, she does. So we're going to have some fun. So, Rachel, oh. before we get on with you, you want to say, you want to introduce Diana? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just know at some point during the show, uh, some people are certainly welcome to call in and share comments, et cetera, um, questions. And I'm here today to talk about my new book coming out. And so I welcomed friends and, of course, anyone to call in. Diane is someone who um, is part of an artist circle here in uh, Minnesota who I've recently come to know. And she's just fabulous. And so I just welcome her into the conversation about my new book and what it means, which is called The Great Green Okayness, A Field Guide to Seeing Your Uncommon Magnificence. And so, boy, anything she would like to enter in at some point and speak to ways that she might see her uncommon magnificence or glimpses of that in her life. What helps her to see that? Since we haven't talked too much about it yet this hour, might be a good start. Perfect. Well, we're very happy to have you. And for everybody out there, you are, you are more than welcome anytime to call in, just as Diane did, yes. at 919-518-9773. Or you can Skype in with us to computers. That's plural, the number 2K voice. We also have a, um, a chat window that if you put your name underneath the video where you are seeing either me or Rachel, or maybe Rachel and me, and you put your name there, then you can take part in, in the chat. So Diana, that's your name, Diana. Yeah. So Diana, Diana. welcome. So, so are thank you, you oh, it's a pleasure to have I, you. Oh, thank you. I just um, was taking a break and saw this message on my feed and so i thought well i better call well good you do so you're good you're a good listener mm -hmm. yeah. well, so a good reader and a good reader so we're gonna i would love talking about uh this concept of okayness and find finding your um uncommon magnificence uh, yeah so have so have you been doing that lately <laughs> oh every day every day so what have you found well, oh, um, I just, I don't know. I'm pretty comfortable with me, so um, I don't have to go out and really search too much, and I try to encourage other people 
to saying. So have you, I, I saw that um, Rachel had written about finding the, your, the wildlife within. Is yes. that, is that something, have you found something new inside of yourself in this wildlife within? Well, only strength. That's all. Um, I think I was always a little colorful. Not, I don't know if I was as colorful as Rachel, literally, but, um, but I've always been okay with myself. And um, I just celebrate what Rachel's doing. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I'm probably not answering your question, but um, I don't know. I just wanted to congratulate Rachel. Oh, thank you, Diana. Thank you. Well, well, <laughs> well, you know what, Diana? You know, it's, it's fabulous when... Um, we all can celebrate or when we, tr when we can celebrate our own and somebody else's coming out party, regardless of what it looks like, or when someone is giving permission or helping people come out and play. And so, you know, I thank you very much for, you know, calling in mm -hmm. and, and supporting and, and sharing that you are really comfortable with yourself and maybe and you're colorful, mm -hmm. but maybe not as colorful. And that's okay, too, because I said I, I wanted to I said, well, what am I going to wear today of that color? And I thought, well, my lips, because I like my lips colorful. And so even there before coming go. today, yeah, even before coming today, I said, you know what? Rachel has a, um, a way of kind of, you know, by osmosis, the color just comes through. You hear Rachel and you go, color. <laughs> happiness so yeah, i appreciate rachel. you coming well i appreciate it and i appreciate rachel so much and i'm sure this book will be a success well great well thank you so much for showing up uh -huh. have fun bye thanks bye diana bye. so bye. rachel yeah so tell us about uh, mm -hmm. this whole concept of the okayness and you know this amazing yes. part of ourselves. So go ahead. Sure. So as I work as a psychologist as my primary part of my profession, and one of my clients, fabulous, fabulous clients, mentioned to me one day that she had this vision in her own life of seeing this great green field. And in this great expanse, she could see her whole life before her in all its uh, glorious realness, you know, all the joy and all the anger, just all of it. Um, and, and in it all, no shame. And in it all, she could see it peaceably and beautifully. And so in this, she called it the great green okayness and not needing to wait to see it. Mm -hmm. And we eventually in our conversations talked about also not just seeing it, but becoming it. And so my book is a, has a series of lots of different reflections on how lovely we each are. And that is one of them. And they are all inspired by themes that I've heard in my psychology office, but where I feel like it's not just about psychology clients, it's about the human heart. And that's why I include them in the book, mm -hmm. these words and my full color drawings, because it's, it's cumulatively a story about the human heart. And I mean for it in a way to be a mirror to the reader mm -hmm. of their beautiful, deep life that they hold. Um, and so I come at it many different ways throughout the book to reflect their magnificence. So, I, and I love, and we're going to show, Amnon, can you show a picture of the book so everybody can see? That's great. There's Thank the you. cover. It's so pretty. So mm -hmm. I, first of all, I want to understand what you mean by okayness. Mm. Basically, I mean, of course, it's a made up word. Well, the best ones are. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And, you know, it just means that everything's okay. That who you are in the field of yourself is okay unconditionally. Everything you are and what you've been through 
and all your messiness, all your, um, all the different bumpy learnings you've been through, all the mountaintop moments and in between, because it all together makes you you. Um, and so it's this calling upon our imaginations to renew our sight of ourselves and to realize how deeply okay we really are um, in such a field, in such a sight. And when we recognize this mm -hmm. okayness, what do, you, what, what do you think, what do you imagine it to be like? Yeah, I think that um, my experience with my own life and in witnessing the lives of others that uh, increasingly as, as human beings, as we can embrace the okayness, the great green okayness of our lives, the freer we become to live out who we are really. So for example, we started the show talking with giggles about color being colorful, your lips, you know, or whatever it is that comes out in you. And so the more we're okay with being okay, you know, in our okayness, then we are freer to dress how we want to dress, whatever that authentically looks like on you, hopefully with whatever brings you joy. Um, we are freer to speak from our heart in many settings to just say, to speak in words, make up words um, that just come to you because it's just your true expression. Um, you're more free maybe to create things, to draw a drawing or write a song or, um, you know, whatever the thing may be. Um, How do you we, know what those things are? I think the clues are um, paying attention to what brings you joy, even if it's a little bit of joy. So for example, a dozen years ago, um, it was not the, this pair of glasses, but a different one. And I remember I was in a store trying on a pair of glasses and I looked in the mirror and I couldn't stop giggling. And I, they just brought me so much joy. And I remember thinking, oh, could I wear these really? And I couldn't, um, I couldn't leave my laughter behind. And so I knew that I needed to go with those. So Rachel, so the, so it's so interesting cuz I mean you I know cuz part of me wants to say, do you always dress like this? Mhm. Mm okay. Always <laughs> in green now or just color whatever you feel like. Colors. Colors. Yeah, I think um I think colors typically and also what makes me happy, but I think those two go together. And oftentimes it ends up looking, I look like um, I have clothes on that you might find in an eight-year-old little girl's department. <laughs> so the, the point that you say to yourself, let's say in dressing, mm -hmm. could I wear that, mm -hmm. is the point that something happens right in, the, in the, right in the sliver before that time you say that, where there is a, like so. a call, like a call from your wild self within saying i want to wear that yeah i want to do that right right, right? Where your heart starts picking up racing just a little bit right uh -huh. we love how you put that marilyn the sliver before you really start thinking about it real consciously uh -huh. right yeah but that very first moment it's almost like the childlike moment mm -hmm. you know where you don't censor yet Mm -hmm. And it's just, ooh, I know I like what I like what I like, or I am who I am who I am, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because I think that that's a very important visual. Mm. For, because sometimes to understand mm -hmm. what it looks like or when it is or what you can do, blah, 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 to understand this, it's good to have like a, a, like a visual, a video, a streaming video, yeah. you know, with sound and emotion. So that you can say, okay, th that's what it looks like. It's in that moment, that second, where you, yes. you see something, right? Totally. Uh -huh. And you know, I just, as for some reason, and I've never quite had this thought before this moment, but I just had this thought come in, and again, I'm going to trust it and say it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I, 
you know, it's another example of just noticing the things that just zip in, mm -hmm. right, and going with them. Um, the thing I just thought about is like in fairy tales, like if you could have a fairy godmother um, just kind of lovingly, gently swoop in with all these sparkles around her and kneel at your feet and say, my darling, what is it you really want? And you would tell her the truth because she's so safe and she's there with such love and such humility. Um, and I think that if we could even imagine that scenario, we can maybe imagine what words might start spilling from us. Um, and that's from that kind of pure spot inside that is so worth honoring and obeying and following. So Rachel, so I think this is so beautiful because I can close my eyes and I can like kind of feel myself in it. Mm. So, you know, we, when I had those, those times yeah. where can I wear this? Am I, am I too old? Am I, am I, is this appropriate? Is my body right? Mm -hmm. um, is it this? Is it that? Is it a, I can talk myself out of something. Right. A lot of times, if I don't talk myself out of something and I do these things, there's so many of those things I do that it's like, okay, can I speak here? Can I write this book? Who am I to write this? Who am I to do this? Right. There's so many, they build up. It's like I can't get to them anyway, so what am I supposed to do? Yes, and those come all the time, don't they? They yes. bombard. Yeah, so what do you suggest? Um, I suggest predicting them. I suggest knowing that as soon as uh, we tell ourselves that we want something that is dear to our heart, that almost instantly we're going to have a barrage of uh, fearful statements come in or reasons to not do it. Um, because we're vulnerable and we're scared and we've either had lots of different people in our lives who um, who have given us messages like don't take those risks or that's not who you are etc or just I don't know we just have vulnerable hearts mm -hmm. um, and so I just think to see that and know that that's not the wise voice. That's mm -hmm. just a scared voice. And our job is to put our arms around that scared part of us and say, I'm with you, I understand, you're scared. And as much as that's true, um, I'm gonna be with you, but the adult of me, the wise one of me is gonna lead us and make this decision. And I'm gonna hold you and be with you. But you know? uh, Yes, and, and, and to enjoy the process of the yes. joy of being in those decision making process of I mean so t so it's it's a great thing right to yeah. enjoy should I wear green glasses or yellow glasses today what's wrong with that right you know, what's wrong with just having the sheer pleasure of making right. those phenomenal choices not such right. a bad thing and yeah. we have a question but before we get to the question I just want to invite anybody out there that would like to call in about anything that we're talking about or anything similar to what we're talking about or nothing about what we're talking about, <laughs> feel free, 919-518-9773 or Skype in with us to Computers 2 K Voice. And you can also um, chat with us on the uh, in the chat. Chris is reminding me that I used to wear yellow glasses. I did. And they mm. were very much like yours, but yellow. Mm. And I loved them. Oh, where did they go? Well, this is my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay. So <laughs> I got hugged. They were plastic. They were good uh -huh. glasses, but they were plastic. Yeah. They weren't metal. I got hugged so many times on this side of my face for some reason. They kept breaking. And my oh. husband had to keep gluing them back together till there was so much glue. It couldn't oh. hold anymore. That's what oh. happened to them. And I loved them. Love them, love them to the to the oh. ends of the world. Yes, they were fabulous. I love them. Oh, you've yes. got locked up like the Velveteen Rabbit. Yes. Now I'm oh. wearing dark blue, but those I loved. So here's oh. the question from Chris. And she okay. says, um, I have a question for Rachel, who knows that my, my dear daughter is a mini version of her, which there is no question in the world that Chris's daughter is a mini Rachel. If you, okay. if you ever get to see her daughter in real life or not, 
even on the reenchant planet earth website you'll see a picture of her she is a mini and this was from years ago we have a picture of her on there she is a mini rachel no question so as a mom chris is asking how can i continue to nurture her vibrant lovely spirited unself conscious self who dresses in vibrant colors mismatched patterns and lives in joy she is her own person i love i love that about her any advice oh well my first thought is i just want to hug chris and affirm her because chris's question is already implying that she's doing an amazing job as a mom that she, that she would even be consciously deliberately asking that question um and so you know as a mother myself of two sons um in general my biggest passion is affirming who people are so when i see um, like my older son, who's 19, is a dancer. He's a dance major in college. And so at every point in turn I can, I affirm his dancing and, um, and affirm that direction. And, um, and it's so genuine in me. Um, uh, but with both my boys in lots of ways, I'm constantly looking for little clues or peaks or expressions of who they are and brave moments where they really let that out. And then I really just pour out my words to them of how I see them. You know, I try to be a mirror. I try to say, I see this in you and I celebrate it. I encourage it. How else is there any other things that I can do to help open doors or bring you someplace or show up and watch you or et cetera, et cetera? I don't know. I mean, I just think it's about our words are so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and so just to be witnesses to each other of our authentic beings and say, I see you. I see this in you. Yeah, and I, and I think it's a great example, and Chris says, uh, and she says, thank you so much, Rachel, for being so sweet. Um, you know, I think it, talking about Chris's daughter is an example of a lot of kids. Maybe yeah. they show, them, show their, you know, ingenuity, they show their creativity, their individualism in many different ways. Um, and as Rachel was talking about her sons, you know, just honoring that. You yes, know? and then and we all have the a, a little Chris inside of us. Mm -hmm. We all have a little Rachel inside of us. God knows if you have a little Marilyn. I don't know what to tell you, but <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, uh, just let me know if you do. <laughs> That's but, hilarious. Uh, um, no, Marilyn, the other thing that occurs yeah. to me is simply, um, you know, uh role modeling, mm -hmm. you know, like in Chris saying, what else can I do as a mom? Well, you know, rock it being Chris, you know, um, whatever you put on your body that feels authentically Chris, that also brings you joy, be overt about it with your daughter. Uh, say, oh my gosh, I am rocking these socks today. Check it out, daughter. Mm -hmm. Or... Um, I am rocking this choice. I just put myself out there today in the world in this particular way. You know, aren't I amazing? You know. <laughs> yes. I yes. think they're modeling too. Yes. And um, Madge yeah. on the chat who had come on earlier and said she has your book about diving in. Okay. Um, she says one area that has been freed up is hair. I see oh. more young people and older people with all sorts of hair colors too. Mm -hmm. yes. That's so true. Yes. Yeah. There is a hair vibe in our world, isn't there? Yeah. And it's interesting because years and years and years ago, um, I wore my hair with like red on the bottom and dark mm -hmm. on the top because I saw Hollywood doing it. And yeah. I was wearing it. And my brother said to me one day, why are you wearing your hair like that? I said, because they do in Hollywood. He said, but you're not Hollywood. And uh, hey. this was a long time ago. And... But, you know, I really think that that obviously wasn't the greatest thing to say to me, but it, did, it didn't, you know, but it didn't stop me. But I yeah. think that, Madge, you got a point. There's a, we're, we're, we are a little freer. Yeah. Like today, if I wore red on the bottom and brown on the top, 
it would, you know, it might be received a little differently. Mm-hmm. But I don't, you know, I think that years ago we it wasn't we weren't as free. But thank right. goodness we are freer today. I think. Thank right? goodness, right on. So, so go ahead. Oh, I just was thinking that I I would love I to read an excerpt from my book. Oh, no, we'd could, love you to. It kind of dovetails with what we're talking about, and and I could do more than the one, um, but I'd be very interested in hearing um, thoughts about this because I think more deeply it's not just about what we're wearing. Um, I think that it's about our search to um, express ourselves in all the ways that we do in our world authentically. And um, so could I go ahead and finish yes. Yes, and then let me show just this little um, um, thing that mm-hmm. I know you have this in your book. A traditional illustrated field guide serves to identify the wildlife around you. This one is designed to identify the wildlife within you. And that's mm-hmm. Rachel's book, right? Mm-hmm. So we have that up on the that's screen. So go ahead, Rachel. Tell us what you're going to read. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that is just a perfect entree to this. So each each of the Page spreads has a little title, and there it's all full color illustrated by me. Um, and here's one of them. It's called "You Are More." You are the swift cheetah, the strong lion, the intuitive giraffe, and the dressed-up zebra. You are all of Africa this whole wide world. You are entirely all of you. A client told me she was a bear. Mm -hmm. We are all more than we appear. Beautiful. So, you know, this sense of, can you see that you maybe are more than you've let yourself imagined? Here's another page that we I copied from your book, and it's and it's um I I can't I can't read it too far away. Amna, mm-hmm. can you read it? I just want mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> oh, that's a part. That's a little. Pull, it's pulling out a quote from the larger paragraph. That was um, I can speak to that. That was a client who was in my office, and at the time she was pregnant. And Rachel, hold on one second. There is somebody on the line. Come so back with that. Okay. Hold on one second. Hello. Oh, hello. I thought I should just be on mute. No, you're real live. Did you okay, Did you want to comment? Fault. No, should I be listening to the call somewhere? Oh, yeah, you can be listen, watching and listening to it from um, the, our website, nissancommunications.com. Thank if, you, I'll if, hang up. Yes, and you can click on live and watch it from there. Okay, go ahead, Rachel, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So she was pregnant. That person's heart. Um, okay, so the mashed potatoes and gravy. So I had this pregnant client in my office and she was blowing me away that whole hour with her insights the things she was saying and um and now you know toward the end of that session i remember saying to her um all right well you have said so many wise things this hour would it be helpful to summarize a little bit so it just doesn't all dissipate because there was so much um so that we can just encapsulate it. And then she just gave me this dead stare and said, mm, I just want mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> she's pregnant and she's about to leave. And, you know, and so that sometimes our needs just come down to those just foundational basic things. And I thought that was brilliant. You know, here I was caught up in well, the amazing things of this hour were about all these lofty, wise, wise ideas. And she so beautifully just switched gears and said she just was really interested in the mashed potatoes and gravy at this point. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it was just funny. And I am st- honestly, people just melt me all the time with the things they say. And sometimes I think I know the way 
to go or, oh, well, this was the beautiful thing that was said or needs to be realized. And then they show me something different and I'm completely delighted. So anyway, that's, that was that page. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I would totally agree with you. I think sometimes we, we've, we've not sometimes we do make it very difficult and we've made it complicated. And even those of us that are in a, on a, you know, self-helping kind of profession, mm -hmm. you know, we, we read, we're, we're working at reading into things, we're working to try to understand things. <clears throat> we're working to clarify things and to, to see the light. And sometimes all we want is mashed potatoes. Right. That's exactly. It. And again, talk about tuning into your joy and to sort of that thing before that sliver of time comes in, you mm -hmm. know, of what is it that I really want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think so. And I think some, and, and just in ourselves, I mean, some, we, we, we don't always accept the simpler things and we have to look into it and see what do we mean by that? And what's the message in that? And what is the universe really saying? And sometimes the universe is just saying, have some mashed potatoes. Have some mashed potatoes. <laughs> Enjoy your life, right? Well, so how do we know, though? I mean, when to turn it on and when to turn it off. And, you know, I know that's all part of our journey. But what mm -hmm. can you tell us about that part of our journey? Well, can we compare notes, Marilyn? The, yes. the first thing that I was thinking is, I think the indication of the best, when you're at a, a fork in the road, um, if you're able to, the best direction to go is always where you feel more content or peace or maybe even a sense of relief, but taking the moment to pay attention, you know, um, do I take on this more complicated task or focus or do I have the mashed potatoes and gravy and I say that as more of a symbol, um, you know, I mean, when we're done with this hour, you know, do I go to my, you know, little pile of to-do lists, or do I take a moment and rest for a few minutes, for example? I mean, so many little crossroads in our day. Um, but I think maybe the key is just to take a moment and listen first before deciding. We usually know. Right, and listen for that, the feeling. Listen for the voice of that, the voice yeah. in that feeling mm -hmm. that says, no, I really just want to take a moment and put my feet up, you know. So, but we have another caller, I think. Hello. It's Vanessa. I just, um, this is Kiki. I just uh, saw Vanessa <laughs> right now. Get Vanessa. I Hi, I didn't want to interrupt. Who, who do we have on? Well, we have Marilyn and we have Rachel and we have Vanessa. Hey. Hey. Hi, Hi sweet friend. <laughs> This is so awesome. Right? We're talking about the great green okayness. I wonder if you would be willing to talk a little bit. I think it would fit right in about your magnificence and the freedom you have found in your life. I mean, I'd love you to talk about those lips on that car you made or a couple uh -huh. of fabulous stories where you are so free to be yourself. Well... That's what I do. I don't know what, what, can I answer a specific question or? Are you willing to share your story about what you did to your car years ago with those lips? Well, I really wish I had a picture of it because to me <laughs> it was fabulous. <laughs> it was, um, my car did not have a bumper. It was like a really junky old car and it just wasn't pretty. And I like to make things around me pretty. So I found this big, huge piece of uh, plastic and I put it through the bandsaw and made it into probably was about like a, a four and a half foot wide pair of lips. And then I was going to um, just paint them and but instead I found this really awesome um, like probably around five inch tall tape that they use on buoys in the water and you when a little bit of light hits it you can see it for like three miles away it is really reflective and so I covered the whole pair of red lips in this reflective tape 
And so I screwed it on to the front of my car and the it was it was funny because you could really see you couldn't see my car but you could see this like pair of lips like four miles three miles whatever <laughs> down, down the road and it was like oh my gosh this pair of lips is coming closer and closer vanessa you how long ago was that that was well i was just out of high school uh, are you still the same uh lip person that, that today as you were then um you know do what do you mean do i i mean are you still lips? that spirited um oh yeah i yeah. i did not know at that time that that was i just did that so naturally it didn't and i probably got a lot of flack for it from people you know at my at my age at that time i remember people would be like Ooh, I'll take some of their lips, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I was just like, "What? I think it's cool. Shut up." You know, <laughs> I just, just let it. Whatever. I didn't know back then that it was really being that outrageous. I just thought it was. I was having fun and just, you know, making things pretty. Yeah. So, which which is what I want to do. So. And you continue to do Kiki. And you, Honey Bun. Uh -huh. would, would you add anything more about, see I know her as Kiki would you add anything more Kiki about for the people listening about what like about permission giving about what it is people can maybe say to themselves to feel the kind of permission to um, create lives that are beautiful and free to them you know what? I think it starts with um, just your tiny little surroundings around you. You know what? It doesn't have to be in front of a full-fledged audience. It can just start with something next to your bed on your nightstand. You know what? You, that's your nightstand. You have the freedom to put anything you want on it. That's a tiny, tiny little, little step. And yeah. uh, you know what? just shut off the voices that are, you know, that are saying, oh, you can't put that on there, you know, just go for it in tiny little increments and then move to, you know, your kitchen counter and then move to, you know, move to your car. Vanessa, I Vanessa, I've got to ask you a question. Okay, what's that? So you said, and I can't remember what you said first, you said it's not, it, this is in essence what I got. Correct me if I misunderstood or something but you said in essence it's not this it's just that I want to make it pretty what yeah. was the what what did you say it's not it's it's not um, outlandish it's not what what did you use Do you remember yeah, I, I don't know I guess it's just I don't want it to be boring I mm. wanted to make it so that it you know sparkles and has a shine it has a little it has a little Things can have their own little voice of their own that tell you that, hey, this, you know, life every day is special. So mm -hmm. it's very important what she's saying, right, in that conceptualize that, that piece. Because that, you know, again, we go back to, and I don't want to rehash this thing about judging and all of that stuff, but we, we take ourselves through, like, all kinds of crazy stuff, at torture in yeah. doing something. And her simple thing of flipping, flipping it on a dime from the torture to coming out of her heart and saying she just wants to make it pretty is yeah. so simple. It's yeah. so mashed potatoes. Yeah. You know, it's so gravy. It's so real. And that's the thing I think that we really want to focus on is, you know, we, we just want to make it nice. We want to make it pleasant for ourselves. We want to make it pretty. You know, if I'm wearing yellow glasses, it's, it's because when I look in the mirror, I smile. Yes. Yep. Right on. And, why, and why, have, why have something plain? Yeah, why really. Why make it, you know, just something that makes you smile, makes your heart giddy. Right, and frankly, when um, some other people look at you, it makes them bring sunshine into their day, too. Yes. I hear that over and over and over again, and that gives me joy even more. Mm -hmm. It's like yes. double fold. Right, you know? it multiplies. <laughs> and it does, it's not always the thing you wear, or it's, 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 
it's the way you are being. Yeah. It's the way you express yourself. It's yeah. the the acceptance that you show and you share with other people that they want to, you know, just melt in your presence. You know. Yeah. It's. I it, learned. Go ahead. I, I heard something, babe. Like I don't. I don't even remember it. It was probably like my last year of high school, and it was somebody told me that Kiki, you can't please everybody. You can't. You just possibly one. No matter how hard you try, over and over and over and over again, you cannot please everybody except for one person, and that's you. You can please yourself, and mm-hmm. I don't mean that to sound, you know selfish or, you know, condescending to anything else. But you know what? It really, really, really comes down to that because people aren't sitting around thinking about you. That you really, really just have to make yourself happy because once you do that, then, you know what, a couple other people might, you know, bring joy from, you know, what you do or whatever. So you you just have to, you have to start from within first. Yes. So that's, I don't right. know. I get so much joy from so many other people that that you just have to send it back out there. Exactly. What kind of do you? What do you work, Vanessa? Um. Th- yes, I'm a full time artist. Uh huh. And and you do what kind of art? Um, I make things pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Good I, answer. <laughs> I know you do. It's pretty herself. Uh-huh. She's that- <laughs> yeah. Let me. You know, it, it, it's beautiful, and, and I love how we're talking. And um, I told Rachel before the show started that I'm in the process of writing a book about men, because I have found in my practice as a coach, and I work with a lot of women and kids, but I've really started working with a lot of men, and I'm seeing them very different than I saw them growing up. Saw them in my adolescence, saw them as a teenager, saw them as in my first marriage. I'm really seeing them differently. And I really like men. And I'm seeing them warm up and I'm seeing them, you know, wanting more and more to express themselves. Do you see men, uh, where do you see men fitting into the conversation that we're talking about now? The, you know, the color, the okayness. Um, where do you, I mean, maybe not wearing green glasses, but. Maybe I've seen some great men wearing some funky socks. I love seeing men wear funky socks. Oh, totally. 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 Yeah. I saw a really cool one on Instagram this morning. Um, Rachel, do you want to go? No, you go first. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear it. I, I've been married for um, pretty many years to, like, an amazing – he's a – He's an engineer, but he's like a creative engineer. And some things that like pop out of his mouth over the years um, have been like, why, you know, like, why are you afraid of color? He'll say that to like one of his like motorcycle guys or something, you know. And because he never wants to buy black T-shirts. You know, the Harley, Harley T-shirts are always black and whatever. And he's just like, well, I like this neon orange one or I like this other thing and and um so I you know what I think sometimes guys are afraid to you know show their flamboyancy mm-hmm. for you know different probably different reasons but you know I'm I'm married to a guy that's not afraid of color thank goodness yeah considering yeah. considering I just painted 100 colors on my van <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's it's really in, uh, very valuable to be able to talk about this in multiple ways. Yeah. And I'm I'm delighted that you're sharing about this because I I feel that men are on the brink on they're they're living their Aquarius. They're at right. the brink Ooh. of expressing themselves. Yes. You know, Rachel, what do what are your thoughts? I think there is a brink. I mean, my in my own house, um, again, my dancer son, who's 19, increasingly um, is just wearing super fun clothes. His primary mode of dance is hip hop, so I think that's also been very permission giving for him. But the last time I saw him, he had on two different color tennis shoes, um, two different color style socks, 
Um, his pants were a little bit shorter, so you could really see the socks. And I could keep going with the outfit, but it just, I can't even tell you how much that delights me. Uh, my, it's funny because some of my favorite outfits that my husband wears is in um, the form of his pajamas. So <laughs> but he'll have on like red pair of flannel pajama pants and then, um, you know, a diff whole different color shirt and a whole different color socks and then a whole different scheme color flannel shirt that's just open. And I can't tell you how much that melts me. Um, <laughs> that is awesome. So that is great. I think there is, I think you're right that there is something just starting to turn um, with men. And, um, and that's a lot of fun to see. Yeah. It, it's a yep. lot of fun to see it because you are, you are, um, you're seeing, I mean, Vanessa, Rachel, me, thank goodness. And, and I know lots of you out there, you appreciate, you're appreciating this conversation. You're appreciating looking at Rachel and knowing that she does this. And that you're looking around your home, maybe, and you're seeing, you know, something that you can put in something colorful, something bright. You, you're, you're, you're imagining sharing something about yourself that maybe is like over your top. But it's, but what does that mean? You're hearing Vanessa talk about her car and making things beautiful, and so we're, we're, we're appreciating this conversation. And for those of us that are doing this, which is great, we want to share this. We want to appreciate seeing this in men. And, you know, everybody. Everybody. Exactly. You know, today, by the way, I just came out. I'm just going to say this with these new pendants, which I just think are super cool that I'm wearing. Um, and this is from a page in my upcoming book titled Your Beauty Stuns Me. And it's this sort of super, super power kind of figure with these rainbows going through her, you know. But this is the kind of thing I want people to claim that they yep. have this beauty running through them. And it's like Vanessa said, Kiki, you know, that it's not meant to be the self-indulgent, selfish thing, you know? It's just be who you are. And yep. honestly, who you are is magnificent. It's, there's a stunning beauty in you. And I think to, if I could just read one more page. Yeah, go for uh, it. To. Yay. Yay. It is, um, it speaks to how change can be hard. And, and, um, but it's, it's, and especially when we are um, feeling more depressed or in a harder spot. Uh, but I, I'm just going to read this little bit to you and, and see what comes in our conversation. And it's called Turn That Whale Flipper. Can you feel your whale flippers extending out of your deepest oceanic self and steering you where you need to go? Of course, rising up and turning is massive. You have to bring along your whole body. Can you feel all that serious blue water that's flowing the other way when you turn? Can you imagine being so determined to move into it? This is what it feels like when we become caught in waves of sadness and worry. It can feel as if the turn toward more life-giving thinking and nurturing self-care will require heroic strength. Of course, you are right. It will. This is also your water to navigate, dear creature, and you are powerfully built for it. Mm. Yes. That, was, that was wonderful. Beautiful. We all are this whale, and we're all powerfully built for it. And we're all powerfully built as we need to make these big turns in our water. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, for those of you listening today, you know, might you be willing to conjure up the strength, because you have it, um, to make that turn and take a new look at yourself. And that's what, that's what it is. Right? Yep. 
and look in and see your magnificence. You know, the whale, of course, doesn't even think about it. it just is. And the whale, you know, it's interesting because I have a, a, a colleague that was on a little mm -hmm. while ago, a couple of weeks ago, and he's doing, uh, he's a PhD and he's doing work on whales. Ooh. And what fascinated him was that whales communicate in pictures. And he's <gasps> going to be coming on and talking about this because that's what? how they communicate in pictures. I don't, I don't understand it. Wow. Yeah, but they communicate in pictures. Did you know that? No. Well, no. I didn't either. That's how they communicate. Fascinating. Isn't that wild? That's like mental telepathy. It, right. It's going to be very interesting to hear what he has to say. I wonder wow. if their brains are highly developed because that's the part of our brain that's super visual yeah. and, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Very, very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So before we go further, Ra Rachel share about your book and you and different things about you and where they'll find all your books and your okay. stuff. And yeah, go ahead. Sure. Well, the new book, The Great Green Okayness, um, comes out mid-April. Uh, but the fun thing going on right now, just through December 4th, is I have this pre-order campaign that um, people can go on to this website. I have a, a slide for it. Great. Yeah. Um, let's see. Huh? It's, it's, it, oh, it doesn't show it. It's on um, oh, the very it's, top, but it's kind of hard to read yeah. of your slide. Yeah. Um, okay. It's, do you want me to yeah, say Yeah, go it? ahead. You could tell them what it is. People, I'm so sorry because this is very long. If you have a pen chat. handy. <laughs> yeah, well, you it, can, we can type it in the chat. Okay. That would be great, too. But it's. Um, Indiegogo, which is I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O -G -O dot com forward slash projects, plural, um, forward slash the dash great dash green dash okayness. You could also just type in Indiegogo dot com and then I think there's like a search bar and put the great green okayness and it'll come up. Or Google both those words and it'll come up. Um, but in that campaign, you can order books. You can order also my past two books I've written. All I did was listen and diving in. You can order um, original art um, and wrapped canvas art and um, jewelry like these pendants, all kinds of things on that website. And it's only up through December 4th. Um, and it's also meant to help raise money for these pages to become a reality because of all the costs that I've put into it this time to make um, the, camp the book really beautiful. So I've hired a graphic designer and an editor and a whole team this time to work with me um, just to, to make the book um, deserving of, of the reader's magnificence so that when they look at it, they truly can see something beautiful of themselves shining back at them. And here's a little, another slide that just shows a little teeny tiny little smittering of some of Rachel's things. But if you go there, you'll, you'll, it just, they're captivating the colors. Oh, and they're, they're fantastic. I love her drawings. I love every word that of the <laughs> book. It's just, oh, it's just, it's like a little, I don't know, you can use it as journal prompts even, you know, that's, I don't know if that's something that you've ever thought about, Rachel, but it's like when I read or I hear you speak or whatever, I just want to run to my journal and like jot little things down and, and I have pictures that pop into my head. So it's like, oh, it, the whole thing is just fantastic. I'm so excited that you're doing it. It's just Thank you. See, Kiki's had a preview. She's had um, the... She hasn't seen like all the visuals um, nope. thrown into it, but she has had the ma the rare the raw manuscript of just the words. So there's a question out. Uh, uh, Madge is asking, do we get the products even if she doesn't make her goal? Yes. Yes. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, you, you know these words and these visuals. Whether you're a whale, whether you're a zebra, you know whatever you ha whatever colors you wear, whatever slang you share, whatever words you make up, they are your magnificence. They are your 
okayness and that is that's the visual and that's the place that w that I would like to meet you um, let me just say, Marilyn, that yeah. was like a gorgeous rap piece. That was a great hip-hop number. You just said it. You just spilled out a little poem. But I'm oh, that bummed. came out of your mouth. <laughs> you know. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I honestly, uh, my eyes could have been closed in that moment. Because <laughs> I was just like describing what, you know what it was uh -huh. and Madge is saying she's ordering now so oh thank yeah. you Madge. yeah and it's in the chat so please feel free to uh go there and um support this th this movement you know support this stuff uh mm -hmm. vanessa any final words from you honey um i'm just in love with with rachel i'm so glad to to meet you here Likewise. online and thank you. um yeah i'm I'm just spreading happiness every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're spreading pretty. And listen, yep. you know, I was <laughs> as I interjected a little while ago, I am in the process of writing a book about men, and I'm looking for some men who are willing to share uh, that they are emotional, share their stories, their, their sensitivities, their color, their extraordinary extraordinariness, um, their uniqueness for the world so that it doesn't have to be so unique. If, if you know of anyone, your husband's interested, if you would connect with me, I would greatly appreciate it. And for everybody out there that's listening, uh, um, I, Marilyn. I'll volunteer, I'll volunteer Bob Johanning for sure. Oh, my God, that would be great. Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com. Just write me. Okay. And, and then we can connect. If you, I mean, uh, the more the merrier from all walks of life, I would love. So if anybody, you know, if you know anyone... That's so great. Please feel free. I really want to um, show and share men. My, I love women, you know that, but I, I, I have I want to show the beauty in men as well. So, uh, Rachel, final yeah. words, final thoughts, f anything. Right. Anything. Go for it. Mm-hmm. All right. So, you know, I guess my final thoughts are these. Um my book is a book, but it's also a vision that what I'm really hoping happens is it gets passed on and on and on. That I want to say to you, I see you, and you're stunning. And this is a very serious business. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we don't hear that enough from each other. And that's what my book is about. It's a, it's, it's a book, but it's a movement, if you will. And so to give it to yourself or to give it to those who you love or who you think could really use that message, um, that's what it's really all about. That's lovely. Oh. And it is a movement and it is important. And we have to stick together on this. I mean, yeah. it, it has to be where you know, you see somebody in their colorful self and expressing something new and speaking about something new and writing a new book and, you know, eating something new, cooking something new. We, we've got to support all of us in that and 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 enjoy it. And I'm not. Could you put up the next one last slide, please? OK, and I have a book, uh, a manuscript about listening. It's like a declaration of independence. So it's very cool. It's colorful. It really shares listening on so many levels. And a lot of what Rachel is speaking about is really truly tuning into yourself so that you can express your color. And color, I don't just mean green glasses. I mean all everything about you is color. So yeah. please, if you're interested, write to me at Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com. And then the next one just shows my email uh, once again. Please write to me if, if, about the book, about a storyline that you would like us to share here. If you've got a book you want us to share, we would love to do that for you. Uh, if you know a man, got a man for, for me, let me know. Love to have, have them in my book, share, share in this experience. Rachel, final, final, final word. Final word would always be thank you. Uh, and final word would always be all my love and all my heart to you. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Thanks so much for 
being here. I look forward to it each and every time you come. And everybody out there, thank you so much for gracing us with your color today because we were beaming. I felt Yay. it. I was at my beaming self. And Vanessa, thank you so much for being here with us. And Diana for calling in and everybody on the chat. Nam nam. Mwah. See you next week. Ah, thank you. Love you, Kiki. I love you. Love, love you, you. Love too. you. Bye. Kisses and hugs. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Health In with Debbie Brook, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVBI members, The Tanya Love Show, Your Healthy Pet with Gisela DiCarlo. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an mp3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com sponsored by atomus.com makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals carolinaapparel.com and deltaforce.net